What does spiritual abuse in the home really look like? You may be surprised to find out that it may not always involve cuss words, but using some other words. And these other words that get used, they're really supposed to be meant to bring life and healing. But in this context of spiritual abuse, they do more harm than they do good. In this video, I share a clip from a candid conversation from our Life Recreated live show that airs every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern. Each week, we dive into difficult conversations to learn how we can heal and how we can grow after spiritual abuse. Make sure to check us out. And while you're there, hit that subscribe button so you can get notified for any new content that we have coming out. Without further ado, let's dive in. Church. We actually came out to the church. Our marriage was totally broken and somebody had knocked on our door and given us the flyer. When we came into the church, I'm thinking if there's a chance for our marriage to be saved, it's going to be a God factor because it was a pretty bad marriage at the time. And there was just a whole lot of abuse going on within the home. So we came out to the church and God was really able to get a hold of my heart. I think when you seek him as a person, God can do things for you. And he did that. But uh, one of the big pieces was that almost immediately the Bible began to be used as a way to manipulate me in the home. As we're going through this marriage and as I'm thinking God is going to restore our marriage, I didn't realize that he was using the Bible so much to mold and shape me into what he needed me to be as a victim, honestly, if I'm just going to be honest about that. And so I really, I just wanted to be a good wife. I wanted to be a good Christian. And I tried my best to do all of that, but it just seemed like we would just put on a face coming to church. We would seem to have it together, but then we'd go home and I would dread going home, honestly. We'd be on our way back from church and I'm thinking, I wanna go there because I knew that the mask would come off once we got there. And it was just an abusive situation. We were there for seven years together and we're there going all the time to church and nobody ever knew there was a problem in our marriage. Nobody ever knew there was a problem in our home because there are just things you don't talk about. And because the other people have been molded and shaped to you don't discuss your problems to other people, it was just really easy for him to get me aside and to control me. And when you're controlled like that, you start to believe it's you. If you have somebody really emotionally and psychologically abusing you, and you don't have anybody to confide in and get some direction from, you really do start to believe it's you. And at one point I believed everything going on in our marriage is my fault. And if I were a better Christian, if I were a better wife, then, you know, it'll just work out. If I'm quiet, if I pray about it and God will fix it. And that just wasn't the case at all. Wow. Just to clarify, I want to clarify, I'm taking some notes because that was really good. Just even hearing that. So going back to what you were saying, when you were talking about like the Bible being used against you, you were talking about the context of it within like your marriage, like your husband was trying to use like the Bible against you. Is that what you're saying? Or was it yeah, absolutely just as a whole? It was as a whole, but it would be a sermon would be preached. And on the way home, immediately he would take the scripture used and he would start manipulating that scripture to how that would apply to me submitting to his authority or use it as a way to show me what I'm doing wrong. And I bought it because I'm hearing that over the pulpit. And then I'm hearing the man who's supposed to be leading the home say the same thing. And I'm thinking it has to be me. That was God, but, you know, talking over that pulpit to me, even though I wasn't convicted in the service, I'm thinking if, if my authority is saying that it has to be me. Wow. Oh my goodness. So, all right, let me just backtrack. Let me make sure I understand. So you come into the church, like you said, marriage is torn apart. Then you're hoping I'm going to find some healing. I'm going to find some direction here, but it turns out that the abuse that you're, or, or the things, even the, the things that you're dealing with in your marriage, you're realizing that in the church, they're taking certain scripture and context and it's being used against you in a sense is what I'm hearing you say. Is that kind of like what I'm hearing? So now how did that make you feel so, in that situation? Uh, you know, it made me to a question myself as a Christian thinking I'm just not good enough. I'm not good enough of a Christian yet. I was never adding up to the Christian I was supposed to be, honestly. And 
There were times where I would take something to another woman in the church and just say, hey, this is going on in my marriage. And they would go to their husband about it and the husband would tell them, you need to shut her down and tell her to stop gossiping about her husband. And I think that when you're in an abusive situation in the home, especially in the situation we were in, the first thing the abuser wants to do is get you by yourself, put you in a position where you're not talking to anybody, right? And it was very difficult to try to get free from a situation when you're not talking to anybody. That scripture that says there is safety in a multitude of counsel. Yeah. The first thing yes. he did was make sure I had no counsel. So he cut off, he so essentially cut off that connection that you could have with any kind of outlet. But then I think what doesn't really make sense to me is that, say for instance, okay, you're going to other women in the church, you're asking for advice and you're saying, hey, you know, help me because I'm trying to get some direction here. And then they're going to their husbands and then the husbands are coming back to them telling you like you need to stop. It just didn't when I hear how that whole kind of scenario plays out, you can see where it isolates you and it just puts you in this box to where it's okay, well, I can't talk to my husband. Obviously, I can't talk to these ladies because they're telling me I'm doing something wrong. And, and so, okay, so then talk to me a little bit about that part. Like when you felt like you were in that situation where you really were isolated, you didn't have anybody to talk to, how did, how were you feeling at that point? Like, how were you feeling mentally? How were you feeling spiritually during that time? At that point, when I realized that's it, I have nobody here. I thought it has to be me. Like, I'm the crazy person. I'm watching this guy playing with our kids. He's an upbeat person. Everybody in the church, they like this guy for the most part. It was just this whole fake scene in our whole lives. Our whole life was fake. And so I'm going to bed, to bed at night thinking, it's me, I'm the problem. I'm not hearing from God. The whole thing narrative in this particular church was that women need to obey their husbands. And if you have a problem with your husband, you pray about it. So I'm praying about it and praying about it and praying about it. And I'm not getting anywhere. And he's just telling me, you don't know the voice of God. This scripture says this. And he was well-versed in the Bible, frankly. And so he would just bring scriptures, not only to me, but to my children. And he would do Bible studies at night, but he's abusing us all day. And so... As I'm going through that, I remember being at the worst point thinking I'm going to kill myself and I don't want my kids to find me and thinking about how to do that. Really? Wow. So and nobody like and that's so so I think that's the thing that that really kind of um, just just sets me back on that. So at that point, which when you're at this point in your life and in your marriage and the relationship, I mean, does it like, so nobody else in the church knows that this is going on and this is happening and this is what you're thinking, right? Nobody knows. At one point I went uh, to the pastor and I said, Hey, we got some marital issues. We need to talk about it. He sits us down in a counseling session and we're talking. And at one point I said, listen, the only reason he typically treats me like this is when he's committing adultery is when he's dealing with somebody else and the pastor was really concerned at that point it was like why do you say that and i'm like i don't know it's just a gut feeling i'm in prayer and this is what i'm feeling in prayer and my ex-husband chimes in and says look i told you she's crazy i told you she's crazy she has nothing to substantiate that and so the pastor looked at me and told me i think you need to stay in prayer and you need to keep praying if you don't have anything to back that up. And I'm thinking, even the pastor thinking that. So it was really tough. Wow. So now you brought up a good point, and this is something that I actually wrote down. I think the thing that you said was being in that environment, one of the things that you were told often was that women, they need to obey their husbands. And if their husband obviously is acting or behaving a certain way, they just need to pray about it, right? And so you said that probably about one or twice, once or twice since we've been talking already. And so my question to you is, as you're going through this, can you remember some of the earliest observations that you had of the role of women in the church where it was, okay, maybe it was some things that you just pointed out where you were just noticing, okay, well, everybody that I'm going to, especially as a woman in the church, they're giving me all the same response. Were there any kind of early observations where like there were red flags where you're just like, man, I don't know if that this doesn't make sense if they're giving me this response or something like that. Did you do you remember any of that? Yeah, I did. So when we initially come in the church, I noticed that 
women have a role there. And that role is typically to deal with the children or to deal with nursery or to deal with things like that. But all the people that I personally looked up to in the church, they were women that were very submitted to their husbands, meek, temperate, all the things the Bible says you should be. But more so what I noticed that even if you have a problem in your marriage, you're really not supposed to impress that on your husband as much as you're supposed to pray for you. You don't need to talk to him about it. You don't need to, you know, say anything. And you're definitely not supposed to talk to other people about these issues. And so that was a big, that was a big kicker for me. So that's what I did. That's really, I fell in line. And that's what I began to do was to submit to my authority, which was my husband and whatever he said that goes. And it just became pretty difficult, honestly. If you think about it, you get put in an unfair situation where you see these things happening. You see these things happening and you see the response of husbands and how they're acting and, and how they may be behaving. And rather than being able to go and have a conversation, rather than being able to go and discuss and kind of work through some of these things, it was more along the lines of, hey, just be quiet, just pray about it and everything will be OK. I'm curious to know, as a woman coming into the church, when you saw these different type of dynamics playing out, like how did that make you feel? How did that make you feel? And how did that, how did what you seen, how did that kind of mesh with like your personality? Coming into the church, I was just really outspoken. And what I learned to do was to be quiet because that's what you're supposed to do. So where I would have an issue and I would be very verbal about it, it was easy for him to mold me into something else. Honestly, if you're trying to fit into this church and I didn't grow up in church, so I didn't realize what a woman of God really was supposed to be or what she wasn't supposed to be. So with no background or no history in religion, it was easy to manipulate me, honestly. What are your thoughts on what spiritual abuse can look like in the home? Drop a comment down below and let me know what you're thinking. I hope you got some value out of this content. And if you did hit that thumbs up button for me, if you want to listen to the whole entire conversation that I actually had with Angelina, or you want to check out some of her content, I'll make sure to put that down in the description below. You can also check out this playlist that I did on how to heal from spiritual abuse right here. Until next time, keep learning, keep healing, and keep growing.